Hello my dear viewers and welcome to this presentation today. We are going to be covering the subject of evangelism and I've titled it The Last Harvest of Soul, The Urgency of Evangelism. Evangelism has been my passion for the past 32 years since the Lord transformed my life and it's been my business to see that other people can see the good news of Jesus can believe in the good news of Jesus and this is my passion this is the passion of everyone who has associated with me in this ministry we want the gospel of Christ to saturate every place that we are so that no one will ever give an excuse and say that they did not hear the gospel we want to explain it we want to carry it with a passion to the people and for today we are going to be having an introduction of John chapter 4 where Jesus carried out a classic case of personal evangelism and the key words that I am building my life on from this verse is verse 35 where Jesus said do you not say four months more and then the harvest Lift up your eyes and look, the fields are ripe for harvest. The fields of the world are ripe for harvest. And you know what happens at harvest time? When you do not harvest on time, when you do not harvest on time, the crop is going to be destroyed. The crop is going to spoil. The field of the earth is ripe. And we better go out and harvest now otherwise otherwise the people will be harvested for destruction just as a brief outline we're going to look at what I have here on the board so we're looking at the last harvest of souls the urgency of evangelism and we are going to read Revelation chapter 14 verse 14 to 20 which is the last harvest by Jesus Christ now in the world and then we're going to examine John chapter 4 verses 1 to 42 and as I've said we will not be covering those entire verses in this presentation today and the highlight is John chapter 4 verse 35 which Jesus says do you not say four months more and then the harvest I tell you open your eyes and look at the fields they are ripe for harvest don't say four months more we could be within those four months that we have to do the work like if you had only four months to do something how serious will you be to do that thing and this thing I'm calling you to here is the harvest of souls the need to go out and evangelize and we're going to talk about time and urgency Four months that's all we got what can we do the ripeness of the fields then how lost are the lost and the fact that Jesus is calling you to be a harvester in this end times now we're going to start by reading Revelation chapter 14 beginning from verse 14 to 20 and uh, this we are in the book of Revelation and there's still a harvest of souls going on and in this case here it is Jesus himself in these days who is proclaiming this word of the gospel the harvest of souls verse 14 I looked and there before me was a white cloud and seated on the cloud was one like a son of man that is Jesus with a crown of gold on his head and a sharp sickle in his hand a sickle is something that you use for harvesting like say when people harvest rice they will use a sickle to harvest the rice then another angel came out from the temple and called in a loud voice to him who was seated on the cloud take your sickle and reap because the time to reap has come for the harvest of the earth is ripe so he who was seated on the cloud swung his sickle and over, uh, over the earth 
and the earth was harvested. In his present ministry at this moment as I speak, Jesus is swinging the sickle for harvest. He's swinging the sickle for harvest and everything will be harvested. The good into the barn and the bad into the fire. Verse 17, another angel came out of the temple in heaven and he too had a sharp sickle. So there is Jesus with a sickle and then there is an angel out of the temple with a sickle as well. There's still another angel who had the charge of the fire. So there are two angels here. One with a sickle and then the other that had the charge over the fire. He came out from the altar and called in a loud voice to him who had the sharp sickle. Take your sharp sickle and gather the clusters of grapes from the earth's vine because its grapes are ripe. The ripeness of the fields cannot be overemphasized. Verse 19. The angel swung his sickle on the earth and gathered its grapes and threw them into the great wine press of God. Oh, 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 oh. If Jesus has not harvested you for eternal life, if you have not believed in Jesus for eternal life, you will be harvested by this angel who is in charge of the fire and you will be thrown in to the wine press of the wrath of God. Some point in our presentations, I'm going to just go through scriptures and show you who is the person who receives the wrath of God. One of such passages is Romans chapter 1 beginning from verse 18 to 32. Which starts, which starts as follows. The wrath of God is revealed from heaven even now against the ungodliness of people who suppress the truth by their wickedness. For whatever may be known of God has been made plain to them by that which is created, even God's eternal power and Godhead. So that men are without excuse. No one on this planet will have an excuse for their wickedness. So either you believe in Jesus right now and be harvested for eternal life, or the angel in charge of the fire will swing his sickle and harvest you for the winepress of the wrath of God, which is the lake of fire. Verse 20. They were trampled in the winepress outside the city. We've seen that in Revelation 22. Who is outside the city? Revelation 22 verse 15. Go and read that. And their blood flowed out of the press, rest, rising as high as the horse's bridle and a distance, a distance of 1,600 stadia or 300 kilometers. So when the earth is finally harvested, thousands, millions, even a billion people will be destroyed by the fire because they have rejected Jesus. Now we have about 8 billion people on the planet today. There may be about up to 2 billion that claim Christianity, about 800 that claim to be evangelical. But how many people are actually born again? How many people are actually born again in this world? Do you understand what I'm trying to communicate? That this is the last harvest of souls and the need to evangelize is so great that you who know Jesus, you should not sit, you should not wait, you should go out to your neighbor, to your neighborhood, to your town, and proclaim the word, the message of salvation in Jesus Christ. This is our business. This is our business. I know today Everyone wants to build a church. What is your number one business? What is your number one goal? To build a large congregation or to have enough money or to build what and what and what and what. But our business in this ministry is that people, souls should be saved and we will stop at nothing to do evangelism in every corner, in every village and in every place in this world. So I thank God even for this 
opportunity that I'm coming to you wherever you are in Africa or the world to stir you up to stir you up to know that this is the time for the last harvest of souls Jesus had told the disciples that because you know me and you have been with me you must testify you must testify about what you have seen and believed because many are still living in darkness so I see here there is time no more to waste we don't have time to waste if you had only four months to do something how urgent will that thing be to you consider it that you have even less than four months to harvest souls for eternal life you will be this sickle that Jesus is swinging in the world because we are his hands we are his mouth we are his feet to go into all the corners of the earth and proclaim the good news of salvation you have no excuse in Jeremiah chapter 48 verse 10 it is said that a curse a curse on him who is lax in doing God's work so I am charging you now by the mercies of God that if you are born again you have no excuse but to carry the gospel to those who don't know otherwise Jeremiah is saying a curse on you who is lazy who is lax in doing the work of God in this case carrying the gospel to those who don't know Ephesians chapter 5 from verse 15 to 17 tells us that it is time for us to wake up from slumber to, to, to take opportunity of the time that we have because the days are evil and boy the days are evil the evil in this world today it is leading many astray and if you know Jesus please my brother my sister it is time for you to wake up to stand up and redeem the time and use every opportunity to proclaim the gospel to those who don't know we don't have the time no we don't have the time for God his time is now his time is today you don't have the next minute you don't have the next second that's why Jesus, Jesus says or the Bible says in Hebrews 3 verse 7 that today 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 if you hear God's voice do not harden your heart if you are hearing this message as someone who has not repented and has been born again in the name of Jesus like Acts 17 30 will say you are commanded to believe in the gospel that verse says that in the past God overlooked your ignorance but now God is commanding you to repent because he has set a day and that day is here by that he will judge the world by Jesus and if you have not believed in Jesus you will be harvested for fire of hell and for you who have already believed this message no laziness don't sit on it you must go out and win souls you must testify and you have to do it now four months more and then the harvest open your eyes the fields are ripe for harvest even now you don't own tomorrow you don't own the next minute so you have to do it now because today is the day of salvation today is the day of salvation now is the time of salvation you don't know the next minute you don't know what will happen in the next minute and in fact by the time I will be done with this message thousands of people would have died without Christ and perish into a Christless eternity it's winning souls your passions now I read here this Jesus made the statement about four months in as much as it took four months for crops to mature once crops mature they must be harvested on time or they will rot Harvest time is busy time and farmers definitely spend sleepless nights. During harvest times, farmers will spend sleepless nights.
contemplating about their crops, how they have to harvest before they may be destroyed. Before it's daybreak, they are on the fields. And I ask you this question. Do you spend sleepless nights contemplating about God's harvest? Do you spend time in prayer asking God to give you the opportunity to speak the word of salvation to those who don't know? Do you do that? Many are perishing in their sins. And the book of Jude tells us that we have to snatch them out of the fire. We have to snatch them out of the fire because the angel who is in charge of the fire is, has also a sickle in his hand. If you don't get harvested by the gospel of Jesus, then the angel of, of, in charge of the fire will harvest for the fire. But God does not want anyone to perish. If the world has not ended today, if the kingdom has not broken in today, it is because God is patient with humanity. Because he does not want anyone to perish, but all to come to repentance. But he cannot force you. Romans 10 will say, How can they believe in him whom they have not heard? How can they hear when, they are, uh, uh, when no one has told them? And how can they go and preach that have not been sent, as it is said, Beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news, who bring good tidings. For faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. And only those of us who know the word, who have believed the word, can carry this word to those who have not yet known or believed. It's our duty. And we see here, uh, uh, we can see here in John, uh, Jesus' sense of, of urgency. Now in John 4, just to tell you a little background of the story, the disciples were with Jesus and they had travels to Samaria. And Jesus was tired. The disciples had gone to, to buy food and then Jesus was sitting and then this woman came. And he had a conversation with Jesus which turned out wonderful in that she believed in Jesus. Hallelujah! And then the disciples came back. And then they wanted Jesus to eat, and he would not eat. They were like, did somebody bring him food? And then, beginning from verse 32, But he said to them, I have food to eat that you know nothing about. Then the disciples said to each other, Could someone have brought him food? Listen carefully to what Jesus said. Let it be your goal. Let it be your life mission. Just as he had a mission from the Father, I have a mission from Jesus, you have a mission from Jesus, and it is captioned in this verse 34. Jesus said, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. My food is to do the will of the Father. Your food is to do the will of the Father, to finish His work, to carry the gospel to those who do not know. You don't have time. We don't have time. That's why I'm coming to you with such a sense of urgency to make you understand that is the world is perishing in sin and they cannot know unless we carry the gospel to them. They cannot believe if they have not heard. They won't hear if we don't bring the gospel to them. Now we look at Jesus making this statement here. It's after this statement that he made this statement. Do not say four months more and then the harvest. I tell you, open your eyes and look at the fields. They are ripe. For harvest yes the world is more than ripe for harvest and when you look at Jesus's life you will realize that every single minute of his life was calculated nothing was wasted nothing was wasted in Luke 9 verse 51 we read this as the time approached for him to be taken up to heaven Jesus resolutely set out for Jerusalem in Luke 13 32 
when he was told that Herod wanted to kill him, Jesus replied, Go tell that fox, I will drive out demons and heal people today and tomorrow, and on the third day, I will reach my goal. Again, he would say in John chapter 9 verse 4, As long as it is day, we must do the work of him who sent me. Night is coming and no one can work. Night is coming, people. Darkness is coming to this earth. There will be a harvest for destruction. And today is today. And we should. Say like Jesus, my food is to do the will of God and to finish his work, which is through evangelism. I say, have four months not passed? Wait a minute. He said this 2,000 years ago. Has four months not passed? What I want you to understand is that God does not live in the past or in the future. God is. He is I am. He exists. And time for him is always now. It's always today. And so, that day, there will be a day that some people will say, Oh, it happened today. You don't know the day, so you have to always be prepared. You have to always be prepared. The ripeness of the fields. Jesus said, open your eyes. And I'm saying, open your eyes and look. For the fields are ripe for harvest. The field of the world will be harvested. As we have seen in Revelation 14. There is the Son of Man with a sickle. There are two angels and one has a sickle. But that angel has the power over the fire. Jesus is beckoning on you now to come to him in repentance so that he can harvest you for the barn. For eternal life. For eternal pleasure. For eternal enjoyment. For eternal abundance. For endless life. For endless ages. Yes, people. Eternal life is real. You will live forever physically with Jesus. That's why I am inviting you for this harvest. If you have not believed, please do so. If you have believed, go and invite others so that they too can be saved. In Matthew 13, beginning from verse 24, Jesus talks about the parable of the wheat and the tares. The kingdom of God is growing in this world through what we call the church. There's still wicked and good people in this world. But Jesus, in a very short time from now, is going to send out his harvesters, which is this angel of in charge of the fire that we read in Revelation 14. And he will sweep out everything on this earth that does evil and sin. And they will gather everything and throw them into the pit of fire where there will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. That harvest is coming. That harvest is here. And the fields are ripe and we must go out and preach the gospel to every creature. And preach the forgiveness of sins in the name of Jesus. And preach eternal life in the name of Jesus. Because if we don't do that, if we don't harvest for eternal life, the field of the earth will be harvested for the fire. How lost had the lost? In Ephesians chapter 2, beginning from verse 1 to 3, the lost as, are described as they are dead in sin, they are of the world, they are ruled by the prince of the air, which is the devil, the spirit that works in the children of disobedience. They are by nature, the lost are by nature objects of hell, objects of God's wrath. They are separate from Christ. They are without hope, without God, without peace in the world. And made reference to Romans chapter 1 beginning from verse 18 to 32. Go there and read that. The world indeed is lost in sin and chaos and confusion. And how urgent do you think? that we need to go out and evangelize. How urgent do you think we need to go out and evangelize? The devil has held the world under his hands, using the power of money, using the power of religion even, 
during the power of materialism and outright pleasure of sin there is multiplication of sin in the world murder every day sex sins like fornication adultery pornography sex trade prostitution and several sexual perversions whether it's oral sex or anal sex or what kind of nonsense that Paul even says it is shameful to mention what the disobedient do in secret the world is gripped in that and you can see it with the advent of the internet social media people are literally dancing with hell they are literally hovering over hell and a little notch and they will fall into hell so much sinfulness and we need to harvest for eternal life we need to harvest Jesus wants you to be a harvester to conclude we we'll finish John chapter 4 verses 36 to the end to 42 even now the reaper draws his wages even now they, we have a crop for eternal life so that the sower and the reaper may be glad together thus the saying one sows and another reap is true I'm sending you to reap what you have not worked for others have done the hard work and you have reaped their benefits just to conclude here I want to tell you that there are many people who have done so much as pioneer work to bring the gospel to places you may be going out to witness where they have already worked so recognize their efforts you may be going to harvest what some other person planted so don't fight but preach the gospel will you be a harvester do you see the need for going out to evangelize yes the last harvest of soul is here thank you and see you next time